Today's gaming PC was supposed to be a journey from start to finish with an amazing all AMD Ryzen 7 7700 at RX 9070 build. However, about a third of the way filming this video, my microphone dropped out for good. It was checking itself out and never coming back. And I didn't realize that until I got back to the studio here and checked the memory card out and realized, oh yeah, we're gonna have to re-record this whole video. And it's a shame because it was it captured the reactions of a build where I thought coming into this PC, it was just going to be another build that was just going to provide good value for money, except it ended up being so much more. And we'll show you guys the price list of the parts that we're putting in today's video, but there's going to be a few standout parts that is going to make today's build really good. The first of which is the Ryzen 7 7700. This is the eight core 16 threaded CPU that I feel just cannot be beat for value because it's just got such a good price tag at the moment. You can pick this up off AliExpress, especially with the sales, which is what I did yesterday. I picked up another one. You can get these for around 130 USD and just a little under 200 Aussie dollars if you use some coupon codes as well as taking advantage of the cashback sales. And that just makes it so that it's not just a good value CPU, but it seriously contends in the higher end of gaming CPUs, where I did some benchmarks on this PC, and it was not falling that far behind a Ryzen 7 9800X3D with my benchmarks that I did with the RX 9070, which is the graphics card that we're using in this gaming PC here today. So you see that it doesn't lose a whole lot of FPS even in a game like Rift Breaker, which is very CPU intensive. So overall, I was very impressed with the performance of this CPU, especially given the fact that we're using more budget orientated 6,000 megahertz memory than my benchmark rig that I'm used to using. So these two components alone are saving you so much money as opposed to going with a Ryzen 7 9800X3D and some more expensive 6000 megahertz say cl28 memory that can cost an absolute fortune though you may notice already from some of the footage that we've got some different parts in this build where it's actually a micro atx build but we're still using a 360 mil water cooler that's because we've got some parts that were sent over from today's video sponsor deep cool where at computex this year in taiwan I went to their booth and checked out some of their products and they just said to me, look, you've got to check out some of these products and test them in your studio because we've come a long way in the last few years. I said, sure enough, let's give your products a go, see what they've got to offer. And I'm glad I did this because Deepcool have indeed come a long way, especially with some of the components that we're showing here in today's build. We'll start off with the CH260. This case... I was blown away by it when I started checking out the temperatures. So we'll start with the RX 9070 in Fermark 2. Here is where I usually do case tests with the side panel on versus off. This is just going to give you a good indication of how good the case has been set up for airflow. Now, given this is a 30 liter case and the temperatures don't increase not even one degree when we take the side panel off, that means that Deepcool have done their R&D on this case to make it so that the airflow is efficient and your GPU is remaining cool. And what we've got here in a 21C ambient environment is essentially a GPU that's staying the same temperatures at 61 degrees, 88 on the VRAM, as well as the hotspot reaching 80 degrees in both scenarios. And this is actually the best results I've seen for the GPU test thus far i haven't seen a better result usually it's dropped off one degree even with some of the better cases that i've tested in the past and this one's actually scored the best result for that gpu temperature and i think the reason for this is because the gpu is actually mounted down the bottom close to that perforated mesh design which actually goes all around the case 
However, that GPU is able to suck that cold air in from the bottom. The other good points about the CH260 is that if we look at the top of the build, we can mount a 360 mil water cooler. And the water cooler that we're using here is the LQ360, which does have a detachable faceplate. So you can orientate that the way you need to orientate it. And so you can have it that the CPU load temps as well as wattage and clock speeds are always gonna be facing the right position and it actually ends up looking extremely clean. Now, here's where we go onto the water cooling performance coupled in with the case cooling performance. And this is where the cooling performance of the water cooler is really good, staying under 60 degrees for the Ryzen 7700 at all times. However, the CPU temperatures did increase about, I think, 1.6 degrees when we had that side panel on versus off. There is a little bit of an increase there where the top three fans are able to suck in colder air with the side panel off. And so although not the best result I've seen for the CPU temperatures, it is still right up there in terms of its cooling performance on the CPU. So with the CH260, it's the big brother of the CH160. And we can see with this case, it's actually doing a great job in terms of allowing airflow to come through the case in a push-pull configuration. But also building in this case, I didn't come into any hiccups whatsoever. It is a little bit more time consuming than a regular ATX build. Do keep that in mind because it's just smaller in general. And if you go even smaller to say a mini ITX build, that's going to take even more time. But I didn't come into anything that was really frustrating at all. I think the most time consuming thing was getting the water cooler in because that was probably my own bad in how I built the PC. I should have mounted the water cooler first and then added on the additional fans after. So it's pretty much just my process that took a few more minutes where if I had to do this build again, I'd just change up the order on which I mounted the parts and I'd mount the water cooler before the case fans and also attach the cables to the motherboard before mounting the water cooler. But for the other parts in this build, we're going with a budget B650 M-A motherboard. It's not PCI Gen 5, unfortunately. So if you've got a little few extra bucks, you may actually look for something that's PCI Gen 5. I just found this one on sale for a pretty good price. But then we've also got a one terabyte drive from ADATA, the Legend 800, which is a really inexpensive Gen 4 PCIe NVMe drive. And last but not least is the power supply, which is the PN850M. So this is a modular gold rated 850 watt power supply. And currently in Australia, at least from my research, it is one of the best, if not the best 850 watt power supply in terms of value that you can get out there at the moment. Not to mention, it does look pretty sleek and it does include a two by six 12 volt high power connector. So if you're upgrading your GPU in the future, whether it's AMD, Intel or Nvidia, and you need that connector, it's gonna be there for you. Just in the case of today's build, it requires two PCI eight pins. And then when I checked out the whole build's maximum power consumption, it was about 360 watts. That was the most I could get the whole build to go up to. And so that means that this power supply is actually a true gold rated power supply, at least when I look at the 90 watts direct draw of the CPU, as well as the direct draw of the GPU going up to around 244 watts. And also on that note, and which you would hope for, the power supply didn't cut out or anything like that and everything worked really smooth. The last thing with today's build is, of course, I want to talk about things that I found could need improving or problems with today's build. And the only thing really is the price. I think the water cooler is coming in at 179 Aussie dollars, and that would be around 100 and say 25 ish, 130 USD, which is a little expensive on the water cooling side of things. But that said, the performance looked like it was really good. It's got the RGB and it's got the LCD display. But I feel like if I was personally doing this build, I could have dropped down the uh, price a little bit more by using a more inexpensive cooler with the Ryzen 7 7700. Now for the case, that is very good. I didn't find anything wrong with that, especially for the price. You can currently get that for around 70 USD and 109 Aussie dollars. The Ryzen 7 7700, that's a no brainer. The RX 9070, that's a little bit expensive. It's a little bit over the 550 USD that AMD have promised. But for that GPU in particular, it's one of, especially on the mid to higher range section, it's one of the more bearable price increases where if we look at the RTX 5080 and the 5090, we can see that they're just exorbitantly overpriced still on the street prices. But then the 5070 Ti is starting to come down a little bit in terms of its uh, price too, but it's still 
well above that of the RX 9070. Now for the ADATA NVMe drive, you could use a heat sink on this, especially since the motherboard didn't have a heat sink included and the drive was just so budget that they didn't put a heat sink in with that. But that being said, it worked out fine. I didn't see any problems or any stuttering while I was gaming. It could have been caused by an overheating SSD. But if I had to do things again, I'd probably put a little bit of extra money into a B650 that has PCI Gen 5 X16 native and a M.2 heatsink included. That'd be my own critique of this build. So it's really only the motherboard and possibly the water cooler that I would change things and do things differently with today's build. The last thing I want to talk about was, you may notice there's some ring fans on the build and these are from a brand called Up Here. And I got them in Japan for a really cheap price. They're actually only got a static white LED on them, so you can't change them. But I do like to keep my builds as simple and clean as possible. And even then I was going to change the rest of the build to white, but the Asus motherboard doesn't have an RGB firmware control and I don't want to install any software on my PC to control the RGB. So I just left that on the colorful settings internally with the other RGB stuff and then left the static fans, the three static fans that we put in here on the white rings as LEDs. So it's kind of like this white and rainbow themed build. We also did install the deep cool creative software, which you need to install to have that LCD work properly and display things. But that's being said, I think it's a very clean look from that LQ360. With that aside, do let us know in the comment section below what you think of today's build. And also I'll put some links in the description below if you wanna check out some of the parts that we've used here. I definitely think you should take advantage if you're thinking of building a new PC. When those AliExpress sales are on, you can really get some good bargains, especially on CPU and memory, depending on where you live in the world. I think in the US right now, Amazon's got some really good prices on DDR memory. But in Australia, those DDR prices are actually beating a lot of the retailers here. So you can get some really good deals on the 7700 and the DDR RAM in particular. And you can really take advantage of that to bring the cost down on your gaming PC. Also, big thanks to Deepcool for sponsoring out today's video. Very impressed by what they've got on display. I think that CH260 is a big winner in terms of a smaller sort of case but still being a high-end case that's not going to compromise on really anything, but you will have to use a micro ATX board. But I find the micro ATX boards are just some of the best value boards you can get out there, especially if you get some of those B650 options, especially if you get one with a PCA Gen 5. I think that's going to do the job really well. And then the cost of the actual case itself really isn't going to break the bank. So kudos to Deepcool for making that happen. Me personally, I would main this case if I didn't have to travel. Because at the moment I travel and when I'm traveling, I need to have a smaller computer. So currently I'm using like an 11 liter case from Dan. I think it's the Dan A4, the Lee and Lee collaboration case. But if I didn't have to travel, this would definitely be my new main case, the CH260. It's just that impressive. And some of their other products, the power supply, that's extremely good value. And then the water cooler is actually pretty fancy without breaking the bank too much either. So they've definitely got some cool stuff going on and I'm looking forward a lot to their new updated flagship air cooler that they should be bringing out pretty soon. So if you guys wanna see that one, uh, let us know in the comment section below. Also, if you have any questions or comments about today's build, things that you would personally change out around this price point, then do let us know in the comment section as I love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech is content, be sure to hit that like button and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.